Hello and welcome to episode number 78, part 2. In part 1 we had 3 matches from Raw. I'd say at least 2 out of 3 of them were absolutely great matches. We had one of our, fun, in my opinion, funnest and most active streams ever. Chat was going that night. We had a record-breaking 6 viewers at one point in the stream. It was an absolute blast. And we hope that episode 78 is just as fun. We kick things off with SmackDown Live. And we are going to see the continuation of two rivalries that we've seen recently on SmackDown Live. Aot Master is going to be taking on Finn Balor. We saw these two face each other a few weeks ago in Finn Balor's first official match as a member of the SmackDown roster. Coming over from Raw during the Superstar Shakeup. Then Balor put away Aot Master pretty easily. Will Aot Master be able to get his revenge this week? And then we've seen over the past few weeks Corey try to face the WWE Champion Kevin Owens on the main event and possibly line himself up for a future title shot. He struggled to do that, but he's coming off a good win on Raw. Can he carry them into a victory tonight? And as you can see, Corey's got two masked men behind him. Why is that? We are going to hear from Corey, maybe get some answers as to why those men are there and possibly who they are. Corey is backstage. Let's listen and hear what he has to say. Last night on Raw, I was part of the main event. And what I witnessed and what I took part of was six men, including myself, not just having a match, but going to war. And we fought, we bled, and we put aside any friendships we had outside the ring aside, and we gave everything we had. And even though I walked out of that ring bloodied and battered, I felt a sense of absolute joy. Because I was part of a team that worked together and fought relentlessly to achieve that main event victory, to achieve revenge for past losses, and to prove that they have what it takes to compete at a main event level. And I want to experience that all the time, not just on special occasions. And so I have decided to take two up-and-coming superstars under my wing. As a warrior, I will lead them and show them the ways of victory. And they will serve as my friends outside the ring, and my army inside the ring. Their names will be revealed once they prove they can make a name for themselves inside the ring. But tonight, they will accompany me to the ring when I defeat Kevin Owens, just like I will in the future, when I retake my throne, and my place as the face of SmackDown Live, and most importantly, the WWE Championship. Because we are chosen for greatness, and we are battle ready. The WWE Champion and Corey's opponent tonight in the main event, Kevin Owens responds, what does he have to say? Corey, you get some fluke victory over on Raw, coasting off of the Revival, and suddenly you think teaming up with some rookies is going to lead you to the WWE Championship? What a joke. Corey, ever since you came to SmackDown, you keep spouting off this nonsense about how you came to SmackDown to retake your throne and be the WWE Champion again. But then you get in that ring with me, and you fail, time and time again. And you'll do it again tonight, this time in front of your new friends. Because this is not the war zone. This is the Kevin Owens Show. Alright, so we heard, got a little bit of insight into... Those two men are with Corey. We won't get to know their names yet, but they will be accompanying Corey to the ring for tonight's main event for SmackDown Live, a non-title match between the WWE Champion Kevin Owens and Corey, who comes into the SmackDown, the number four contender to the WWE title, could become number two or possibly number one contender with a non-title victory. But for now, we turn our attention to Ayat Master versus Finn Balor. Aot Master looking for revenge from a few weeks ago where Finn Balor defeated Aot Master with some ease. We haven't exactly seen Aot Master live up to the potential that we saw from him when he was part of NXT on the main roster. Can he 
turn things around and pick up a victory here tonight against Finn Balor. Let's find out and get this match underway. No more talking behind each other's backs. Now they are face to face. And pretty soon, fist to fist. Oh, look at just. Oh, what a nasty, nasty move. Oh, flying forearm. That'll turn your lights out. Things not looking great for Finn Balor. He looks incredibly oh, motivated, though. Don't expect him to be down for long. Yeah. 
Face Buster. Finn Balor quickly getting the shoulder up. Just needs to do more damage. What a stomp. Good grief. you got to believe this one's over. He's starting to feel it here. He's going to have to cut off his opponent's offense quickly. Let's not get ahead of our pin attempt. Gets the shoulder up. How in the world? Swing blade. Nicely done. Oh, he's able to reverse it. Uh-oh, I, I think I know what this superstar is going Could for. A, a, a muscle buster? Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. Here he goes. Finn Balor's... Ooh! Nobody does it quite like him. Looking for... Ooh, nasty impact. Got every out... Not enough to end this one. Not yet. It's like he's tapped into some unseen energy source. Beautiful technique. And Finn Balor slips out of harm's way. Extraordinary elusivity. Finn Balor's in a world of hurt. There's a good chance he can't recover from this. Yeah, things certainly appear to be trending in the wrong direction for him right now, guys. He goes for the cover. Never say die attitude out of him. Even now, Finn Balor refuses to give an inch, fighting through and battling on. What a slam! Impactful. Will jar your spine. Nailed it. Bad spot for him to be in here, guys. He's got to do something to get back in this thing. Ooh, what impact. Looks like he's starting to tire. Guys, he's going to have to turn things around quickly if he wants to win this thing. He's really starting to look fatigued here, guys. And when that happens, your whole body starts to give out on you. He's going to need to be careful here. Oh, and he dodges out of the way. Boom, what impact! Two. Oh, targeting the stomach. He doesn't want to do this outside the ring. Harsh impact. Balor slips out of harm's way. Extraordinary elusivity. Boom! <laughs> He's got the shoulders down. And he got a near fall out of it. Man, oh man. I really can't believe what's gone down so far. This match has been even more physical than I thought it would be. Oh boy, he is rolling. I wish I could tell you guys what this superstar thinks of this week's power rankings, but when I asked, the only thing I got was a no comment. Oh, that hurt in the chest. It's like he tapped into some unseen energy source. He's looking hapless out there. He might just have nothing left to give, guys. This is all but a... Oh, 1916. This is his opportunity to win this thing. Oh, going to the top. High risk.
Uh oh, I, know. I think I know what this superstar is going It'll for. A, a muscle buster. Too many other guys that would have been able to kick out of that. He's still in this. I don't like the look in his eye here, folks. Finn Balor perched on top. Here it comes. Coup de Gras. Wow, I'm just as surprised. He thinks he has it. Two. This guy just refuses to quit. How'd he do that? Quick thinking to avoid that one. Looking for a blackjack. Game, set, match. Shoulders on the back. One, two. Kick out at two. Oh, that may have been a slow count. How'd he do that? At some point, the referee may want to think about stopping this one before somebody gets seriously injured. These athletes seem to have tried everything in their playbook. Oh, there's more in their arsenal, I promise you that. I don't know what it is, but they'll find it. His shoulders are down. One, two, and he got a near fall out of it. I'm just as shocked as everyone else, Cole. He's talking his opponent from the top turnbuckle. This is where Finn Balor's at home. Coup de grace. That's what he was looking for, Michael. And will this be it? Yes. And a near fall. Can you believe what he's withstood here today? Jumping, leaping attack. He's too quick for him there. And Finn Balor slips out of harm's way. Extraordinary elusivity. He's making a statement here with this attack. Oh, this is dangerous right here. The intensity of this match has been incredible. Incoming. Ooh, what impact. Counter here. When this guy's on, look out. Here we go a second time. Things are about as bad as they could possibly be right now for Finn Balor. Things do not look good for Finn Balor. Not so fast. Here it comes. He's got him. One more left jack. Face first. But I this could do it. Uh-oh. Two! Oh, how resilient was that? I'm impressed. It's like he tapped into some unseen energy source. What a brutal beating we've seen dished out so far here tonight. And the cover for the win! And he manages to get the shoulder up. How'd he do that? I gotta say, when I saw this week's power rankings, I thought there was a misprint. There's no way this superstar deserves such a favorable ranking. Oh boy, he is rolling. 
Beautiful technique. A lot of people work. He's going for the pin. This could be it. Oh, no, a kick out. Wow. I thought for sure that was it. He's fighting back here. I expected nothing less, Cole. Now oh, the old vicious head crank. Look at the torque. Nailed it. Going all the way up. Finn Balor perched on top. Here it comes. Could it, Ross? Finn Balor never see. He's got him covered. Two. Three. What a way to win a singles match. And here's another look at what made that match so special. Remember this? Almost forgot about this one. He ain't playing here. He was on point the entire match, as you can see here. I'm sorry to tell you that you just missed one of the most exciting SmackDown matches in recent memory. All right, well, it was a bloody and brutal battle between two bitter rivals Finn Balor and Ayat Master. Ayat Master gave it his all, showed a lot more of the old Ayat Master that we come to know on NXT, but even that would not be enough. Finn Balor hit three coup de gras to top Ayat Master's two gun stuns, and Finn Balor is going to pick up the victory. And we move on from one huge rivalry match to Another, this time, featuring the WWE Champion Kevin Owens and the Chosen Warrior Corey, accompanied by two men he has taken under this wing. As who are those men? We'll find out in the future. Will this lead to the formation of a new stable? We'll find out in the future. But for now, they will be accompanying Corey to the ring against the WWE Champion Kevin Owens and a non-title opportunity in the main event of SmackDown Live. Let's get that match underway.
the guy looking at him in the mirror? This should be an incredible matchup. I mean, both men have extensive offensive repertoires, lasting endurance, and an insatiable appetite to be number one. Settle in, guys. This is going to be a blast to watch. Here's the cover. Yeah, I don't believe that, that he didn't win this match right there. Not yet. What a stomp! Good grief! He's starting to show signs of fatigue. He may have to start reevaluating his game plan. Hey, you're going to absorb some punishment in a wrestling match. It just goes along with the territory, and he knows that. I doubt he's all that concerned at this point. I know it's early, but he has to do everything in his power not to let this get... Shoulders down! That was all too easy for Kevin Owens. Not yet. Harsh impact! Kevin Owens may be in a bad way here. This could be the start of an ugly downward spiral if he's not he's... careful. Well, he had to expect to take some punishment tonight. You don't step in the ring with this guy and walk away completely unscathed. I know it's somewhat early still, but this could be a pivotal point in this match, guys. Let's see how he reacts here. You gotta believe this one's over! Knee drops. That was nasty. So precise. Oh boy, he is rolling. Once kept clear the deck, there's a cannonball coming through. That one definitely hurt Cole. Here we go. Kevin Owens is setting it up. Kevin Owens setting it up. Oh, oh, power bomb. What a maneuver. Only a two count. Yeah, it's going to take more than that. Boom, what impact. People have been wanting to see these guys go at it for a long time, and by the sound of this crowd, I think they're getting what they wanted. A lot of people are questioning how this superstar got such a favorable spot in this week's power rankings. But not to me. Seems perfectly logical. He finds himself in some big trouble here. Looks to me like he just hit a wall. He has got to do something quick. And you get the feeling that he's not going to look back at this match with great fondness. Got to get back in the ring. We might just have a count out on our hands, Cole. Knee stop! That'll ruin your leg. Oh, look at the... Nito! This is what makes him one of the best in the business. He's fighting back here. I expected nothing less, Cole. Oh, boy, he is rolling. 
Oh, nasty impact. What a comeback. The elbow. Oh, look at this. Oh, kicks. He's going for the pin. A kick out. This one's not over yet. And we continue. Now, here we go. Beautiful drop from above. I think. Boom. <laughs> Can he finish the job? Oh, my goodness. This hurts. Oh. That might just be the final nail in the coffin. The night could be over for Kevin Owens. And he fights his way free. He's got to be working on instinct right now, Cole. I got to say, when I saw this week's power rankings, I thought there was a misprint. There's no way this superstar deserves such a favorable ranking. A kick out, and you can see the frustration starting to build. Still in it. What a gutsy performance. Oh, right across the knee. That's how you put an exclamation point on the end of a match, guys. Got the shoulders down. A kick out, and he almost had him. How'd he do that? Oh, boy, he is rolling. Here we go. Kevin Owens is setting it up. Kevin Owens setting it up. Pop up power bomb. Now that got those shoulders on the mat. Too close for cover. Gonna take more than that. Oh, look at the speed. Oh, man, that hurts. A minor miracle might be needed to overcome this beating. What a stomp. Good grief. Oh, he's such a tough target. And if he hits this, this one's over. And you can see that Owen. Oh, and there it is, boys. Bold move going for it again. He's got the shoulders down. One. What is keeping this competitor going? Nice kick out there. Uh oh. You gotta believe this one's over. Things aren't going so well for Kevin Owens. Oh, it's locked in the cross face. This one is over. Those eyes are telling a painful story right now. Kevin Owens just too fast for him. Surprisingly quick. Boom, oh, what impact. That's how you wear down your opponent. Owens might want to be careful here. Doesn't want to get ahead of himself. Oh, come on! How can this be legal? This could lead to a disqualification quick. Look at this! Nobody controls the pace. Here he goes! For the win! Two! Three! Kevin Owens did it! Kevin Owens did it! And here's another glance at these superstars in action. Check them out here. Man, this was great. I remember this part very well. No doubt about it, he brought his A game, as you can see here. three count. There's no copy that main event, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Have a great night. Right, so Corey put up a better fight than he did.
last week against Kevin Owens, but it still would not be enough. Kevin Owens is going to get yet another victory over Corey, his third straight. And even with the two men that Corey said he'll be taking under his wing at ringside, Corey is going to take a loss here. And another bump in his road to try to become WWE Champion as he was two years ago. And how does that match and the rest of the matches on this card affect the rankings on SmackDown? As well as for the four wild cards that appeared from Raw, their rankings on Raw. Let's find out. Kofi Kingston defeated Randy Orton. The four wild cards that appeared from Raw that got to compete on SmackDown this week were all four lower card superstars from Raw getting a chance to compete on the opposite brand. Gallus and Anderson defeated Eric Young and Mojo Rawley. In non-title action, the SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair defeated Lana, accompanied by her husband Rusev. Lars Sullivan defeated Roman Reigns. And our first of two WIT matches on this card, Finn Balor and AI Master put on a great match. That went unfortunately for AI Master and in defeat. Same goes for Corey and Kevin Owens, where they put on a great rivalry matchup, but it would result in a loss for the WIT member when competing in the match, in this case, Corey. And how does that affect the rankings on SmackDown Live, as well as for the wild cards on Raw? Let's find out. No Way Jose did not appear on this edition of SmackDown, so did not have to defend the 24-7 championship. The In the Women's Tag Team Division, they were not in action this week, but we'll recap. The Iconics are the Women's Tag Team Champions, number one contenders are Kabuski Warriors, and number two, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. In the Women's Singles Division, the champion is Charlotte Flair, number one contender, Bailey, number two, Lana, number three, Ember Moon, and number four, Carmella. The SmackDown Tag Team Champions are the Colognes, number one contenders, Heavy Machinery, number two, Rusev and Nakamura, number three, the Planets Tag Team, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, and number four, the B Team. The Intercontinental Champion is Shelton Benjamin, number one contender Finn Balor. Number two, Ayat Master, who actually forgot to move down for his loss, so unfortunately I will need to do that. So it's actually going to be number one contender Finn Balor, number two Andrade, number three Ayat Master, number four Elias, number five Buddy Murphy, number six Apollo Crews, number seven R-Truth, number eight Chad Gable, and number nine Ali. The WWE Champion is Kevin Owens, number one contender, Lars Sullivan, number two, Kofi Kingston, number three, Dolph Ziggler, who returns to SmackDown Live, and as per the WWE Title Division, he's competed in real life for the WWE Title at Super Showdown last night. Corey, I guess there's any silver lining to his loss that he does not take a decrease in his rankings in the WWE Title Division because the two people below him, Randy Orton and Roman Reigns, both lost as well. So Corey will remain the number four contender to the WWE title. Number five is Randy Orton, and number six is Roman Reigns. And now we move on to 205 Live. Okay, so for those of you that saw part one of this episode, and for those of you that follow WITM News on social media, you know what's going to happen here on this 205 Live and what our match is going to be. But for those of you that may be newer members or casual viewers, we are going to have that announcement here anyway in a promo segment. It's going to start off with the Cruiserweight Champion, Andrew Spudstron, and the 205 Live General Manager, Drake Maverick, speaking backstage. Let's listen in and hear what they have to say. Andrew speaks to 205 Live General Manager, Drake Maverick. Hey, Drake. I had something I wanted to run by you. Drake Maverick responds. Andrew, now's not really the time. I'm busy tracking down No Way Jose's every movement so I can pin him and become 24-7 champion. However, I trust you after everything you've done for 205 Live, so whatever you want, you've got it. Okay, and shortly following Drake Maverick, giving him his blessing to do whatever it is he wants to do, Andrew heads to the ring with a microphone in hand. He is now in that ring with that microphone. Let's hear what Andrew has to say. As everyone knows, I take great pride in the fact that I've played a huge role in helping to build up this Cruiserweight division. A couple of weeks ago, 
the cruiserweight title match between myself and Humberto Carrillo was on not the pre-show, but the main card of Money in the Bank, which goes to show just how far this division has come. But for as much pride as I take in building up 205 Live, I take even more pride in seeing superstars that come from the same place I did, the WITM School of Professional Wrestling, succeed. And so I am honored to present to you the newest member of 205 Live and the Cruiserweight Division, a good friend of mine, a graduate of the WITM School of Wrestling, and a former Universal, Intercontinental, and United States Champion. The Laughing Evangelist, Geralt. Yeah. As we get ready for this tag team match, Byron, tell me, who do you like in this one? Come on, Michael, you know I can't answer that. Look at these teams. Let's hear what Andrew has to say to Geralt now he's made his way to the ring. Geralt, welcome to 205 Live. I've wanted you here for a long time, and I'm thrilled that you've decided to come here. And I know your career is still far from over, and that you have a lot left on the tank. But to help you get adjusted to 205 Live and a different style of wrestling, I'd like to make you an honorary member of Team Live Strong Spud Strong for one month. That means that sometimes you will team with me, and when you compete in singles matches, Team Live Strong Spud Strong will be in your corner. And now, Gerald, I'm going to let you have the floor. Introduce yourself to the WWE Universe members here for 205 Live. Gerald responds. Yeah, brother. You, Bailey, and Lance having my back sounds great. And I'm excited to be here in 205 Live. But just remember, Andrew, that like I told Corey when I was teaming with him, one day I will challenge you for your title and we'll have to face each other in this ring. But for now, I am more than happy to learn from the best. So thank you all for such a warm welcome, and God bless. Alright, so Gerald's first match as part of 205 Live, part of the Cruiserweight division, will be teaming up with his friend, the Cruiserweight champion, Andrew Spudstrong, accompanied by the rest of Team Livestrong Spudstrong, Bailey, and seven-time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong, They'll be taking on two rivals of Andrews that are not going to make things easy at all for Gerald on his arrival in 205 Live. Two men that would love to injure him and make his first match on 205 Live his last. Drew Gulak and WITM's Austin Rage will be their opponents in a main event. So we have rivalries renewed here between Andrew, Gulak, and Rage. We have Gerald making a 205 Live debut as a member of the Cruiserweight division. Should be a lot of fun. Should be a great match. Let's get to it. Gulak's in the house. Introducing first. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 193 pounds, Drew Gulak. At least he didn't bring that silly PowerPoint presentation with him. I know those PowerPoint presentations are highly educational. You can stand to learn a thing or two from Drew Gulak. Has he ever cornered you in the locker room area? Once. He got me too. Most miserable experience of my life. No doubt, though, that he can get it done in the ring. We have a 
big time tag team match coming up here. A big time match with big time stakes, Michael. Neither one of these superstars can afford a loss right now. and set to start things off here. We're ready to go. Tag team action in full effect, guys, and these superstars are about to show all you folks what it's all about. You know, even though the title is not on the line, this is still an important match for the champ. He can't afford to show any weakness here. Oh, and a slam! Blow. Ooh. Oh, nasty impact. When Drake Maverick became the general manager of 205 Live, one of his goals was to motivate his talent. His primary target was Drew Gulak, who Maverick said had become a goose. Nailed it.
Ooh, what impact. Michael, you mentioned Drake Maverick's interaction with Drew Gulak. I really think it woke something up in Gulak. Just check out the intensity he brought into subsequent matches against the likes of Tony Nese and Mark Andrews. It's all about balance, gentlemen. We can have a Drew Gulak who's ruthless in the ring and with presentation software. Now there's even more reason to worry about getting on Gulak's bad side. What a stomp! Good grief! You guys see that distance? Oh, clothesline! In May of 2017, SmackDown Live saw an incredible women's tag team match when Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch squared off against welcoming committee members Natalya and Carmella. The rivalry between these women got so intense that Drew Gulak, big move coming. Oh, wow, the crowd's on the edge. Of it might be cliche, but it's true here. It ain't over until it's over. I think only a group as treacherous as the welcoming committee could bring Becky Lynch and Charlotte. He's looking at it. Oh, I'm not sure how much he has left. Shoulders on the mat. Oh, a quick kick out by Gulak. Not yet. Too early. Irish whip. Tagged in. Harsh impact. Oh, man. Right to the arm. Hyper extend your elbow. Man, look at the quickness of Gulak. Goes down hard. Arm is grapevine. Trying to step through. Uh -oh. Here it comes. Wow, he got out of it. Yeah, I'm not so sure he had it fully locked in. When this guy's on, look out. Specifically targeting the leg. He's in a little bit of trouble now. He's always up for a challenge, and tonight is no different. But if you're counting him out now, you haven't been paying attention. He has more resolve than just about anybody on the roster. This might be it. Oh, my. Oh, boy. He is rolling. He might. Nobody does it quite like him. The night could be up. He's going for the pin. A kick out before three. Just not enough damage done yet, Cole. What a strike. Beautiful technique. Tough spot to be in right now for Drew Gulak. It just doesn't seem to be his night tonight, guys. I think I can safely speak for all of us when I say that this beating he's taking is pretty tough to watch. Oof. He knows he's in trouble. Here it comes. Knocked off his feet. Now that's a takedown. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Oh boy, he is rolling. What a clothesline! Ouch. He's left wide open here. I don't think he even realizes it. He looks dazed. This is about to get bad. Flap jack! Ooh. 
And there's his speed paying off. You got him. He goes for the cover. One. He's a long way from a three count, I can tell you that. Not even close. Oh, what impact. No, he reverses it. Oh, man, what a hit. Knocked right off the apron. Shot block. This might be it. Oh, my. Body on body. Wow. And here's a cover. One. Two. Gets the shoulder up before three. That's all right, Cole. Comes up big with the reversal. He's looking at it. He looks to be losing a bit of leverage here. Oh boy, he is rolling. When you talk about great tag teams, we can go all the way back to teams like the Tolos brothers. Stevens nicely done as he gets out of the submission. Color me surprised, Michael. I did not see that one coming. He's making a statement here with this attack. He wants it one more time. Tag team competition dates back all the way to the early 1900s. Corey, you mentioned some of the classic duos from sports entertainment's incredible history. In today's WWE, the tag team scene has never been more competitive. I don't know who has the edge when it comes to talent, if it's Raw or SmackDown Live. I think it's too close to call, but all the teams truly think and act as one. Oh, it's locked in. That's how you put an exclamation point on the end of a match, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if that caused some serious internal injuries. This is what makes him one of the best in the business. Boom! Ooh. And we have our winners. These guys gave everyone their money's worth. Here's another look. You're getting after it here. Alright, so Geralt's 205 Live debut is a successful one. Andrew and Geralt successfully teamed up to defeat Drew Gulak and Austin Rage, who... The loss here was not his fault at all, because Gulak never tagged him in. And if I'm Austin Rage, I'm calling out Drew Gulak and challenging him to a match to get my revenge for Gulak disrespecting his tag team partner. We will have to wait and see what happens between those two. But how is this result and the rest of the matches that occur on 205 Live affect the rankings in the Cruiserweight division? Let's find out. No Way Jose very bravely decided to show up backstage on 205 Live where he knew that that whole roster, including the general manager, Drake Maverick, would be looking for him. Brian Kendrick found him defeated him, and became 24-7 champion, bringing the Cruiserweight title to 205 Live. Only Lorcan defeated Noam Dar, who recently returned from NXT UK to rejoin the Cruiserweight division. Lindsay Dorado defeated Akira Tozawa, and Andrew Spudstrong and Garrow defeated Drew Gulak, who just returned from competing on NXT for a month or two. 
to 2 of 5 live, as well as Austin Rage, unfortunately taking a loss under no fault of his own. And as this effect, the is on 2 of 5 live, and where will Gerald sit after his first night in the Cruiserweight division in the rankings? Let's find out. The Cruiserweight champion is Andrew Spudstrom, number one contender, Tony Nice. Number two, Humberto Carrillo. Number three, Kalisto. Number four, Akira Tozawa. Number five, Gerald. Number six, Austin Rage. Number seven, Oni Lorcan. Number eight, Drew Gulak. Number nine, Sunil Singh. Number ten, Mike Kanellis. Number 11, Grand Metzalik. Number 12, Samir Singh. Number 13, Lince Dorado. Number 14, Noam Dar. Number 15, Ari Davari. And number 16, gentleman Jack Gallagher. Brian Kendrick will currently be out of the Cruiserweight title rankings while he focuses on defending the 24-7 championship against all comers from any brand. And now we move on to NXT UK, where we will not have any WIT matches, so I will head off screen and Sam and give, have you your results and rankings update in just a moment. Okay, here are your results from NXT UK. In non-title action, Jazzy Gobert defeated the NXT UK Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Dave Massif defeated Cash Sono. Sam Gradwell defeated Wolfgang. Gallus defeated, who are the UK Tag Team Champions, defeated Mustache Mountain. And non-title action, and also non-title action, UK Champion Pete Dunn defeated Eddie Dennis. Now does that affect the rankings on NXT UK? Let's find out. The UK Women's Champion is Ray Ripley, number contender Jazzy Gaber. Number two is Sladon. Number three, Jenny. Number four, Kaylee Ray. Number five, Charlie Morgan. Number six, Tony Storm. Number seven, Shia Brookside. Number eight, Piper Niven. Number nine, Killer Kelly. And number ten, Nina Samuels. The UK Tag Champions are Gallus. Number contenders, Webster and Andrews. Number two, Imperium. Number three, Crystal Young Veterans. Number four, Mustache Mountain. The UK Champion is Pete Dunn. Number contender, Joseph Connors. Number two, Alexander Wolf. Number three, Travis Banks. Number four, Wolfgang. Number five, Walter. Number six, Legiro. Number seven, Ashton Smith. Number eight, Dave Mastiff. Number nine, Jordan Devlin. Number ten, Eddie Dennis. Number eleven, Sam Gradwell. Number twelve, Sexton Huxley. And number thirteen, Cassius Ono. So now we move on to NXT. Will we see any of the Blade Runners or Degenerates in action? Okay, so we will see... The Blade Runners in action on NXT. Now lately we've seen quite a bit of them on Monday Night Raw. Especially Jack. In the first part of this episode. Winning the United States Championship. But they are still very much a part of NXT. Captain Casey perhaps the biggest part of NXT. He's the NXT Champion. He's looking to gain momentum heading into his first. NXT Championship defense. In a week and a half at NXT TakeOver 25. Of course, Jack wants to gain momentum as United States Champion and still make a mark on NXT before he leaves. And they're going to be taking on a very talented and experienced tag team and Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, who splits time between NXT and 205 Live. Let's get this tag team match underway. Ladies 
and gentlemen, we have tag team action coming up. And given the state of the tag team division right now and how incredibly competitive it is, this match might just make or break one of these teams. folks as we get this tag team match started when i think of tag teams that can make a major impact on today's wwe i absolutely think of these two teams and he's a proud guy that title may not be on the line here but that doesn't mean he doesn't want to win this match Boom! <laughs> elbow finds its mark Suplex. What a stomp. Good grief. Looks like he's starting to sweat now. He looks to be a little surprised right now. It's no oh, secret that quick tags lead to success in the tag team division. And I'd say the quicker he can make that tag here, the better their chances of winning will be. Oh, my goodness. Crushing it. Oh, nasty impact. Irish whip. What a strike. Only one place to go when you're stuck in the fireman's carry. Yeah, down. And I can tell you it's not a pleasant trip. Oh, incredible height. During the rivalry between the Hardy Boys and Cesaro and Sheamus over the Raw Tag Team Championship, the teams became very familiar with one another. In June of 2017, the teams met in a two out of three falls bout on Monday Night Raw. The most important fall in a two out of three falls contest is the first fall. If a team can win the first fall, that sets the tone for the rest of the match and your opponents are playing catch up. Beautiful technique. The two out of three falls match you saw the Hardy Boys go at it with Cesaro and Sheamus was a throwback of sorts. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, championship title defenses and grudge matches were often decided in the two out of three falls format. Cesaro and Sheamus didn't waste any time and scored the decisive first fall after a bro kick rocked. And he tags his partner in. Momentum has certainly shifted here, Michael. What a slam. Impactful. It'll jar your spine. What a strike. Wow, what impact. Nailed it. Oh boy, he is rolling. And he escapes the submission. And good thing, that could have been disastrous. He might have it. Harsh impact. Can he finish the job? He's going for the pin. Only Lorcan gets the shoulder up. Oh man, I don't know who to root for.
He's in a little bit of trouble now. This very well may be too much for him to handle. If you told me heading into this match that he was going to absorb so much punishment, I would have called you a liar. Especially you, Saxton. But then again, I never believe anything that comes out of your mouth. Yeah, he's clearly not on the right side of this match right now, Ooh. which is a little surprising to me. Oh boy, he is rolling. Suplex! He's got the shoulders down. No, he kicks out. Nicely done. Wow. Too quick for him there. Oh, what impact. What a stop. Good grief. Wow, I thought he was a goner. And Odie Lorkins slips out of harm's way. Oh, what a slam. That hurt. He's in complete control now. His shoulders are down. He's got plenty of gas left in the tank. Uh-uh. Looking for the exclamation point. Oof. I'm not sure how much he has left. He's a one-man wrecking crew. Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this. There it is. The tag has been made. Oh, he needed that in the worst way, Michael. Knocked right off his feet. Beautiful technique. Oh, nasty impact. Oh, what impact. Got the head scissors up. Oh, him. oh, man, that's just nasty. He's starting to stagger a bit. At this point, it's all about how he responds and potentially rebounds. This isn't his first rodeo. He had to expect to take on some offense here tonight. Comes in off the tag. Ooh. Take down the arm is trapped. Oh my goodness, this hurts. Oh, victory is on the horizon. Oh boy, he is rolling. Oh boy, he is rolling. He forces his way free. Man, he just has so much resolve. Oh, clothesline! Tagged in. Body on body! Wow, he's on his heels. His hopes of winning this tag team match are starting to dwindle. But the question is, how much energy does his opponent have left? My guess is not much, given what we've seen him go through so far in this match. Vicious attack. In May of 2017, SmackDown Live saw an incredible women's tag team match when Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch squared off against welcoming committee members Natalya and Carmella. The rivalry between these women got so intense that Naomi was in Flair and Lynch's court, and Tamina was in Natalya and Carmella's court. Shoulder tackle! The tag team seen here in WWE is undergoing a bit of a renaissance, and it's because of action like this. And Odie Lorkin slips out of harm's way. He's got to hurry if he doesn't want to get counted out here. Time's certainly not on his side, Michael. He wants no part of the outside. Look out, he's almost there. Oh, and he makes the tag. That was a game changer right there, Michael. Oh, what a kick to the face. Oh, my God. Lightning fast reflexes. Back body draw. Did you see the height on that? Here's a cover. One. No trouble kicking out of that one. It's going to take more than that. This might be it. Oh, my. He's making a statement here with this attack. You're not going to win many matches absorbing punishment like that. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Goes down hard. 
He knows he's in trouble. Oni Lorkin is in position. Vertical suplex. Nice. Game, set, match. This one is over. It could be over here. This is it. One, two, oh. Boy, this has just been pandemonium. Uh-oh. I'm afraid to think what's gonna happen next. Leaving himself open here. Yeah, guys, I can't think of a worse place for him to be right now. Harsh impact. This is his opportunity to win this thing. That should do it right there. One, two, three. What a tag team display. That match deserves another look, folks. Man, this was great. This was another great moment. He ain't playing here. And finally... Here are your winners, Danny Brun and Oni Morgan. Big win here in tag team action tonight. Yeah, the performance put forth in that match tells me we're looking at somebody who will someday, very soon, be competing in the main event. What a way to kick off tonight. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're just getting started. Okay, so Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan just scored a huge victory. Oni Lorcan just pinned the NXT champion, the United States champion, Jack taking a loss as well. Unfortunately, Casey is going to lose some momentum heading into his NXT Championship defense. Jack will lose some momentum as well heading into whenever his first U.S. title defense will be. Only Lorik and Danny Burch are going to line themselves up to probably take the number one contendership to the tag titles, which are currently vacant. Or if only Lorikin wishes, he could claim that he deserves an NXT Championship match against Captain Casey after pinning him. He does bounce back and forth between singles and tag wrestling, just like Casey does, so he would have a legitimate claim. We'll have to see how that plays out in the future. But for now, let's do our NXT results and rankings update. Only Lorcan and Danny Burch defeat the Blade Runners. Aaliyah defeated Shayna Baszler, accompanied by Justin Duke and Marina Shafir. Tyler Breeze, permanently part of NXT, it was confirmed by Triple H in real life. Returning to NXT after a so-so time on Raw and SmackDown. Killian Dane defeated Adam Cole in a non-title action. That is a non-title victory for Killian Dane, who defeated the North American Champion Cole. And also non-title action. We have another women's steel cage match, which there's only a 1% chance of happening. But yet, this is the second time in a month that a women's steel cage match has been booked. And this time it sees... The NXT Women's Champion Mia Yim defeat Candice LeRae. And how does this affect the rankings on NXT? Let's find out. The NXT Women's Champion is Mia Yim, number one contender Aaliyah. Number two, Shayna Baszler. Number three, WITM's Rose. Number four, Deanna Perrazzo. Number five, Io Shirai. Number six, Marina Shafir. Number seven, Jessamyn Duke. Number eight, Vanessa Bourne. Number nine, Shia Lee. Number ten, Tenora Conti. Number eleven, Casey Catanzaro. Number 12, Candice LeRae, and number 13, Bianca Belair. The AC tag titles are currently vacant. New champions will be crowned out of one of these four tag teams. All four of these teams automatically will be part of that match, so these rankings really don't matter, but we'll read them off anyway. Number one contenders are Birch and Lorcan. Number two, the Undisputed Era. Number three, the Street Profits, and number four, the Forgotten Sons. The North American champion is Adam Cole, baby. Number one contender, Killian Dane. Number two, WITM's Aaron Danger. He hasn't really been booked in a while, but heck, he has yet to make his debut in the 2019-2020 universe year, but it still is not outside the realm of possibility that he will take on Adam Cole for the North American title at TakeOver 25, sitting at that number two spot currently. Number three is Kushida. Number four, Cesar Bononi. Number five, Kona Reeves. Number six, Keith Lee. 
Number seven, Raul Mendoza. Number eight, Riddick Moss. Number nine, Tyler Breeze. Number ten, Dominic Diakovic. Number eleven, Cassius Ono. Number twelve, Velveteen Dream. Number thirteen, Shane Thorne. And actually, I forgot to do this off screen, so I guess we'll just do this on screen. Captain Casey and Jack's rankings on Raw will be affected by their loss. Jack remains United States champion, so he won't really be affected. However, Casey will fall from number six to number seven in the Universal Division, the Universal Championship Division rankings on Raw, meaning that since he is outside of the top five, he will be eligible to compete on main event. So let's make him eligible and see if he will compete on main event and what would be our final match of this episode. He will not, so I will sim and give you your results and rankings update for Ross Minor Show main event, and then I will wrap up the episode. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, here are your results and rankings update for Ross Minor Show main event. Samina defeated Dana Brooke. Titus O'Neill defeated Cesaro. And Bobby Roode defeated Cedric Alexander in the main event of main event. And how does this affect the rankings on Raw? Let's find out. We'll just do the divisions that were affected by main event instead of doing a full Raw recap. The Raw Women's Champion is Natalia, number one contender Tamina, number two Lacey Evans, number three Dana Brooke, number four Nikki Cross, number five Naomi, number six Alicia Fox, and number seven Becky Lynch. The United States Champion is Jack, number one contender Mojo Raleigh, number two Cesaro, number three Titus O'Neil, number four Eric Young, number five Bobby Roode, number six Cedric Alexander, number seven Samoa Joe, number eight Jinder Mahal, number nine EC3, Number 10, Ricochet, and number 11, Heath Slater. And that is going to do it for part 2 of episode 78. I hope you enjoyed it. Epi part 1 was a huge success. I hope you enjoyed part 2 as well. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so I don't miss a single moment of WITM action. Once I sign off, we were going to have info on how to become a WITM member for absolutely free. You have two ways that you can sign up. The first is to sign up on our WITM website. The second is to upload a character to WW2K19 Community Creations on PS4 and give us the needed info. There'll be a little bit more info on that once I sign off. We have some WIT members that stream on Twitch. The links to their streams are going to be in the description, as well as the links to our social media so you can keep up to date on all the latest WITM news. Once I sign off, I will head off screen and find out what four wild cards from SmackDown are going to be appearing on Monday Night Raw and get that card set up. And there will be in some information in the future on, to what, as, on what to expect from episode number 79. Until episode 79, this is Corey with WITM Car Wrestling, signing off. <laughs>